Hey, welcome to the Chill Cook. Today we're going to talk about Moscow Mules, one of the simplest and most widely enjoyed cocktails. This probably is a giveaway for that. Also, just some quick snacking tips, and then something that I'm really excited to share with you. My recipe for pot pie filled with tons of spring veggies and lots of good stuff. I think you're going to be fans of this one. Of course, we're going to start out though with our cocktail. So the way we go about this is we're going to fill our Moscow Mule mug with some ice. This is not, um, I guess, a requirement. You can drink this out of any glass, but it's kind of the recognizable feature of the Moscow Mule is this copper mug. Just grab a handful of ice. So put it all in there. And this is a pretty straightforward. Not a whole lot of measurements required. One shot of vodka. This is the traditional way to do it, vodka. Obviously it's called a Moscow Mule. Vodka is sort of the well-known beverage of Russia. Honestly though, it's pretty easy to make some quick changes here depending on your preference. I love to replace this with tequila or whiskey. Both are a great option here. Next, I just put in actually a half of a small lime. We're just going to squeeze as much of the juice out as we can get and then actually just drop the whole thing in. <laughs> and the last addition here, that's right, only three things besides the ice, is some awesome uh, ginger beer. This is not alcoholic, it's just like a soda, but uh, you can find alcoholic ginger beer and amp it up a little bit if you really wanted to. I like pretty gingery kind of uh, stuff with a little bit of a bite. And you're just gonna fill up the rest of the way with that. Give it a quick stir. And you've already got your drink. Mm, that's good. Really fresh. As it starts to warm up outside, this drink with kind of that fresh ginger and the bite of the lime kind of makes me ready to get outside. And if you're having this in the colder months, it kind of makes you feel a little bit like it's not so cold outside. <laughs> So this is always a good option, and most people have the ingredients around. I always have limes in the fridge and ginger beer, so pretty easy to throw this together. This is an easy drink also to make ahead for a group. If you're having a lot of people over and you don't want to spend a bunch of time staying at the bar mixing drinks, you can make this maybe 10 times the amount, uh, 10 shots, a couple of limes all squeezed in there and put it right in a pitcher. It's easy for people to serve themselves. Now as for our snack, I decided to go ultra simple today because we're kicking it up a little bit with the pot pie later. That's a little bit of a, a bigger recipe. So I actually just have some crackers and some cheese and one of my favorite toppings. One of my tricks for cheese is that most cheese counters at grocery stores these days, especially the places that have the higher end options where they sell you the slices of the wheel and the um, bigger chunk of cheese, you'll find that they sell kind of a little basket full of ends. There are weird shaped pieces that maybe they couldn't get a good slice out of or that broke off or were too small for them to sell in another size. And essentially they end up being little chunks that are like maybe a dollar, two, three bucks, somewhere in there. So every time I go to the grocery store, I like to stop over at that spot and grab two or three chunks of interesting cheeses. And, you know, for a few bucks, you have a nice variety. And even if it's just for you, you now have kind of a nice cheese board selection going on to snack with. For those of you who maybe aren't super familiar with cheese, I like to grab maybe one hard cheese, something like a parm, um, then maybe a soft cheese, something kind of on the brie side of things. And if you're trying to really have variation, then grab something with some blue um, streaks going through it, a blue cheese, that's going to be uh, a little different as well. So keep things interesting. I've got a couple chunks of things here. This is parm. And I actually just have some crackers, little guys. These are lentil crackers. Um, no wheat in these. They're awesomely crunchy, super tasty, actually a little healthier for you too. So I just like to kind of break off some chunks wiggle my knife around as I'm cutting down because this for parm it's kind of nice to get those ragged chunk edges. And you can load up a couple chunks of cheese on there. And this is one of my secret ingredients. These keep in your fridge forever. 
get a little pickled pepper on there. Three ingredients. You can stand around while you're in the kitchen assembling this with a couple things that you've got in, in your kitchen. And, you know, you got your snack. Mm. Mm. Wow. As simple as that is, you have kind of the whole gamut of flavors covered here. This is actually a rosemary chip, and you've got that crispy texture there and that base flavor. You've got a really good salty kind of bite from the parm, and then that fresh vinegariness coming from those pickled peppers with a little spice. <laughs> it's so simple. I could definitely stand here and like eat this for three hours, but we're actually going to get towards our main recipe too. But now you're settled. you got a drink and a snack. It's easy to go dedicate a little bit of time to the rest of our meal today. Okay? All right. I'm going to sit and get that set up, and I'll see you in a bit. All right. As you can see, I have been chopping a lot. And what we've got here, three chicken breasts. I cubed those up to about a half inch cubes. About the same size, we have three large yellow potatoes, uh, about a cup to a cup and a half of multicolored carrots. Obviously you could use regular carrots, but I think the end result is pretty good with all those colors added in there. One red bell pepper, rough chopped, and then also a half of a yellow onion, and that's chopped up as well. I'm gonna smash this garlic. Then I'm also going to chop it up. Just get the skin off of there. When you smash it, it makes it a lot easier. It kind of separates away. So you're going to cut the little kind of root end off of there. Just a little centimeter worth. And then we'll just roughly chop these up. Okay. Now I do want to stress, I know that there are some folks out there who find that working with raw chicken in the kitchen can be a little bit scary, and I get it. A lot of us grew up with um, sort of our parents telling us that raw chicken is super scary and that if you touch this, you're going to get super sick no matter what. It's definitely something you got to be careful with, but if you're at a normal level of careful, you watch the things that you're touching after you've touched the chicken and you know you clean the areas that it was used in you're going to be fine so don't fret over it don't get too nervous about it we're just going to salt and pepper this chicken pretty liberal over that to get a lot of flavor and i've got a pan behind me that is cooking at medium to medium high and then i'm going to add some olive oil there and we're going to start with the chicken and cook it up, get it browned, and then we're going to work our way through these vegetables as well in the same pan. So I'm going to get my heated pan with some olive oil in it, about two tablespoons. And it's already getting pretty hot in there. I'm going to start by getting my chicken in there. I like to identify a chicken scooper because I'm going to be scooping everything out of here as I cook it. And so whichever one I use for the raw chicken, I don't want to use for everything else down the line. And you want to hear a sizzle as soon as you pop these in. And then just let them sit there. Try not to stir too much. Let a surface of the chicken be in touch with that hot pan bottom. Uh, and just let it sit there for a little bit so that it actually gets that browning action. I'm going to wash my hands up just because I was touching that chicken a little there. Whenever you're working with chicken, don't worry about washing it off. Honestly, you probably are just going to be spreading whatever germs are on that surface of the chicken around with water um, all over your sink, maybe your counter, places you're not even realizing. So I actually pat it dry right out of the package and as long as there is low moisture on the outside of it, then you're going to have a pretty good brown in the pan. And since we're cooking it to 165, the recommended temperature for chicken, then we don't really have to worry about anything on the surface anyway. It's going to kill any bad stuff. While you have your chicken in the pot, you can go ahead and preheat your oven to 400. Okay, so we're starting to see a little bit of golden brown in the chicken. 
I'm going to go ahead and retire the raw chicken spoon out of the way. And this is not cooked all the way through necessarily, but that's okay because we're going to put this all into the oven later inside the pot pie. So you're going to remove this from the pan, just over to a plate or something. And whatever browning you have down on the pan is good. That's flavor we're going to build up into our sauce later when we deglaze. So be careful, that oil is pretty hot in there. Okay. Next up, I'm going to do our peppers, onions, and garlic. Separate them out here. I have smushed them all together on my board to get a couple of carrots in there or whatever. And uh, I've introduced this in a past episode, but one of my all-time favorite kitchen tools, the bench scraper. Comes in handy for a lot of things. When you're working with dough, or when you're picking up a bunch of stuff out of your cutting board. quick toss. And like I said, the point of this sear that we're doing is really just to build up some flavor in these veggies and meat. It's not really about cooking it all the way through. The rest of that's going to happen when this is in the oven. And as soon as these onions start to look a little soft and a little translucent, then this is ready. It only takes about three minutes with this part. I'm going to go through and scoop these guys out now too. Once you start getting into these things that are chopped pretty small, if you forget a few pieces in there, it's not the end of the world. I am going to add a little bit more oil to the pan just to make sure we don't stick too much here. And now I'm going to do the carrots. I could do all these together, but I don't want to overcrowd the pan because that can take the temperature down if you add a ton of vegetables in that aren't as hot as the pan. And my focus here is really about getting that browning flavor, so I don't want to overcrowd. So we're going to cook the carrots and the potatoes each a little bit longer than we did the other vegetables, more like 10 minutes, because these are a little hardier, they're cut a little bit thicker, and we want them to be really nice and tender by the time this pot pie is done. So when you cook them here, keep an eye on them. And after maybe about 10 minutes, once they start to soften and brown up nicely, test them with your fork or spoon and just see that they've gotten a little bit soft and start to break apart a little bit under pressure for you. Now we're going to do the same with putting the second batch of potatoes in. Keep an eye on those and cook them until softened as well. During this stage, you're also going to salt and pepper again. You want to make sure that everything is really well seasoned that's going in here and it's going to be delicious. The last addition to the pot here, veggie wise, is our English peas. I really prefer these to other kinds of peas. I feel like they're a little bit more delicate, a little sweeter, so definitely a great option to add here. Every step that we've done here in this pan is leaving behind its flavor and all of that flavor is going to come up off of that pan and go into our sauce. It's time to deglaze. I'm going to switch to a wooden spoon. This is kind of sturdy for scraping the bottom of that pan. And I love these little, like, you know, one serving size chicken stocks because then you don't have to throw any away. And really all we need here is about a cup. Now get ready to scrape when you pour this in here. It's going to bubble. And then you're going to want to be scraping to deglaze the bottom of that pan. And you can see that brown starting to come up off of there and go into our pan sauce. Great. I'm going to add the rest of this cup. I'm 
mostly the reason I'm leaving the peas in here during this process is because my plate is pretty full and I don't feel like fumbling over all these little tiny things to get them out. So that's fine. And whatever your last step in the process is, you can just leave it in there before you deglaze. You notice how deep that color of that chicken stock looks, even compared to when it first poured out of the container, because it's picking up all of that flavor from the bottom of the pan. We're going to let this come up to a simmer, and then I'm going to add a can, or in this case, like one of those packed things, of portobello condensed mushroom soup. If you can just get regular cream of mushroom soup condensed, that's okay too. Sometimes it's hard to find the, the portobello, but I like the one that has as much flavor as possible. So whatever looks best to you, aim for that. Okay, the sauce in the pan is simmering. So I'm gonna add this container of the condensed mushroom soup. This adds even more flavor and also helps to thicken up our sauce. Looking pretty good. And the last thing we're going to add here is just two tablespoons of regular flour. It's going to thicken it up even more. And uh, I'm actually going to whisk this flour in just because I don't want it to be clumpy at all. You're going to whisk right as you throw it in there so you don't get any clumps. And the bottom of the pan is looking like a lot of that browning came off. And we've got a really beautiful sauce here. Okay. So now we just add all this stuff right back in carefully. Oh my gosh. I think this might be one of your favorite Popeyes. and just give it a big stir, get everything tossed into that sauce evenly. Look at that. And all the colors too. You know, pot pie doesn't always feel like a super springy food, but there's so much color happening in here, tons of fresh veggie flavor. And I'm gonna turn the heat to off. I'm gonna put my lid on this pan. And we're gonna talk about the pie crust. I actually like to work right on my countertop with the pie crust. And we've got our pie pan ready. I've got our two discs of dough ready. The dough is from our basics pie crust episode. Okay, so check out that Chill Cook Basics episode for pie crust. It'll get you to this step right here. And we're going to move our crust into our pie pan here. Now, you can make your crust a day in advance, actually. And like I say in the other episode, too, if you get a hole in here, just rip a piece off from somewhere you don't need it, move it to the place where you do want it. No big deal. One of those other intimidating things, pie. And if you just kind of take it slow, don't let anything frazzle you. Dough can sometimes be a little bit finicky. I'm going to get my top ready, just like I got this one ready, and uh, then we'll be ready to fill. So now, we're going to fill this up. I'm going to switch spoons one more time on you here. You don't have to do it as many times as me, but try and move this along more quickly here. And this is going to be a filled up pie. In my head, when I think of pot pie, it's kind of like mounding. So that's the amount of veggies I've given you here for this. And since these are mostly cooked, this is only going to need to be in the oven for about 40 to 45 minutes. Oh my gosh. Then we're going to carefully unfurl our top over it. And we're going to kind of fold it under, connect it up with the other half of the crust here. It's not going to be exactly perfect, it's going to be a little rustic. And then you're just going to go around and kind of do a little pinch design, whatever worked for you, to seal those two up. I like really simple and just push my two fingers together. Create some divots there. Now I grew up with a grandma who baked great pies and my mom also bakes amazing pies. So I always saw them cut the vents in the top actually with a letter to show what's inside. So normally a C would be cherry, I guess. So maybe I'm going to put C for chicken, but I think maybe 
people might be surprised, I guess, if they're expecting Jerry. We'll see. There's our C. And then I'm going to do a couple more little vents around the outside. Just like that. And last, I'm going to do a little bit of wash of milk over the top of this. Um, you can do egg wash on the top of these as well. That gets a really nice golden brown too. I think, A, I never use a whole egg when I do this, so I feel like it's kind of a waste. And B, milk kind of does the same thing, or heavy cream. I'm so excited to share this with you guys. I kind of stumbled upon this uh, one day when I decided I wanted pot pie and just used all the vegetables I had. And it turned out to be, I think, maybe the best I've ever had. Okay, I've got a little bit of cleanup. This isn't a super easy one as we usually do. Starting to dive into some stuff that's still something we can all do that you can be chill while you're making it, but that also is going to really be a showstopper. So, see you in like 40 to 45 minutes. Keep an eye on it. Once it starts to bubble, the top will be brown and you'll see those bubbles coming up through the vents we made, then you know you're pretty much there. All right, so my pie's looking golden and it's bubbling, so it's ready to go. I'm not going to lie. I may have made myself another mule, um, so just warning you about that. <laughs> Let's take a look in here. Wow, this guy looks beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> and now you let this cool maybe for 15 or 20 minutes just so things can thicken inside. And then it's ready to serve. Okay, we're ready to serve this up. I'm gonna try and slice a nice looking piece here for the camera. Um, I know that this is maybe the longest recipe I've shared with you so far, and honestly, it's worth it. It's so good. And if you follow it step by step, you can take a break in between certain steps, have a drink, have a snack. It's really something that you can do and still feel pretty chill about. And this is something that your friends, family, visitors are going to be so excited about. Look at like like crisp butteriness of that crust. Oh my gosh. Awesome. See if I can get a slice out of here that looks awesome. <laughs> Not so pretty. That first slice is always a tough one. Bite with some of this crust, a little bit of chicken, all this good stuff. You can taste all of those veggies, vibrant flavor, chicken, that savory kind of umami background coming from that mushroom soup, and then that buttery crisp crust. Honestly, I feel like maybe this is going to be the best pot pie you've ever had, and <laughs> I'm pretty excited to share it with you. I'm definitely going to eat a lot of this. So, uh, thanks for joining me today. This has been kind of a special episode. This is one of my favorites. And go ahead and check out thechillcook.com for more recipes, videos, lots of cool stuff. Talk to you later.